Ravens Wrap is sponsored by Bud Light, JCTickets.net, Geico Insurance, Dunaway Furniture, Ocean City Golf Club, RussellStreetReport.com, Comfort Inn Gold Coast, Holiday Inn Express, The Original Green Turtle, hosted by the Blue Ox Bar and Grill. Welcome in. Jamie, the bartender. Right there. It's a very Good special ones. edition of the original Green Turtles Ravens Rap Show right here on Comcast Beach TV and Delmarva's Rock Radio, the strongest Ravens affiliate on the Eastern Shore of Maryland and Delaware, 93.5 The Beach. Real broadcasting from the Ravens Room, 127th Street and Coastal Highway in Ocean City. Of course, a part of the Blue Ox with Ravens fans all across Delmarva and, of course, Ravens News 44. Give yourselves a hand. Let's go. Welcome into week number seven of the NFL and for your three and three Baltimore Ravens. We have a very special guest who, of course, has graciously again uh, uh, returned uh, to our set here. A brand new set. Thanks to our folks at Donaway Furniture and thanks to the Super Bowl, quite frankly. Uh, Ravens owner right. Steve Bashotti, folks, why don't you give him a hand? Coming up, we are going to recap the 2012 season that was capped off by the Ravens' second Lombardi Trophy. Also, we'll talk about the busy offseason NFL news and notes. And this coming season so far, we'll get all that from uh, Steve. This Sunday, don't forget the Ravens are on the road to Pittsburgh, taking on the Steelers at Heinz Field. Kickoff at 1 o'clock. That's preceded by the network pregame show at 1230. And this show airing, of course, at 11 a.m. Oh, four. Oh, okay. 425. I hate those things. You're on days. top of it. Pre game at 3.55 right here on 93.5. I just want to make sure you guys are paying attention. Yeah. Yeah, no. The Ravens Rap Show is brought to you by the original Green Turtle, the Blue Ox Bar and Grill, our friends at Bud Light, the Comfort in Gold Coast. We've got reps from the Comfort in Gold Coast, one of our fine sponsors who uh, has giveaways for us. Also, Geico, the Ocean City Golf Club, jctickets.net. Also, have reps here from Holiday and Express at Northside in Ocean City. Also, uh, from our friends at Donaway Furniture, who have given us uh, our great set for the uh, 2013 season. And uh, one of our newest sponsors as well, buyatoyota.com, your official site for Toyota deals. And don't forget, like us on Facebook, Ravens Rap of the Blue Ox. Also, ravensrap.com. That is coming soon on the website. I'm Mike Bradley from 1057 The Fan of Baltimore, and locally here at 92.7 WGMD. To my left, 14-year vet, all-pro, former Baltimore cold safety, Bruce Lair. Thank you. <laughs> on the other side, editor-in-chief of RussellStreetReport.com, voted five years of running, best Raven site in Baltimore by Baltimore Magazine, Tony Lombardi. Tony. Don't forget my six-time Parkville Touch Football League champion. That's right. <laughs> and, of course, this man needs no introduction. Well, we just gave him one. Ravens owner Steve Bishotti. Yeah. Yeah. It's still only six. I retired. It's still only six. I retired. <laughs> Flacco's got Man. five more to catch up to me. <laughs> well, Steve, let's go back to last year at this time. You were here during the week uh, preceding the Houston game where the Ravens and Texans were the only 4-1 teams. We would end up losing that game 43-13, but then the Ravens would reel off four straight wins. That stretch included the 4th and 29 Ray Rice play against the Chargers. Then the Ravens would lose three straight get a big win against the Giants. They would lose a meaningless game against the Bengals at the end of the year, 10 and six, all while dealing with numerous injuries. It was certainly a roller coaster ride after the Redskins game. Offensive coordinator Cam Cameron was let go. Jim Caldwell was promoted from quarterbacks coach to offensive coordinator. So before we get to the playoffs and Super Bowl, Steve, let's get your take from last year at this time leading up to the playoffs. I liked it a lot more when I was coming off a win to come down here. <laughs> I mean, that, and I remembered that, and I remember it was, it's always good to come down here after we've won. And, uh, you know, my, my, my weeks tend to uh, um, go with the team. So some, day, some weeks are good, and, uh, you know, they say sometimes. Steve, you're, su you're such a fan and such a competitor. How long does this stay with you? Are you most like a player? I mean, does <laughs> Is it this really Wednesday? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, yeah. 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 It's still, so it's, it's still there. It's still Thursday. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, because, I mean, seriously, as a player, you know, obviously you always want your team to win. Yep. But when you're playing well, I mean, it's a little easier to go home and to go in a film room when you have a good game, no matter whether you win or loss. I mean, that's just the nature of playing. <laughs> yeah, but I talked to John yesterday, and I met with him for about an hour and a half, and I said, just remember that 
when we win, we really don't dig in to the problems. And as you know, that and you watched film for 14 years. Yeah. And I mean, as a participant, you were watching film and when you won, they said that um, that hands to the face is a boneheaded play. Correct. And you dealt with it, but it didn't sting. And when you had hands to the face or a pass interference and you lost, then they were asking you to accept part of the loss. Exactly. And that, that becomes a little bit different. So oh, totally. Same penalty, two weeks in a row, one's a win, one's a loss. You get your, you, you skate. <laughs> yeah, skate once. You, you had a lot of personal fouls, I remember. <laughs> of course I did. And, oh. and you have a lot more today, when, too. When, when you won, you won, you knew that it was going to be glossed over. And that's all I said to John yesterday was, everybody is under scrutiny now. And when the, the one thing that I've learned over all these years is when you win, the coaches give you guys a little bit of grief about the things you did wrong. Absolutely. They tell you it could have cost you the game. Absolutely. But the coaches never get criticized after wins. And so what I said to John yesterday was, when you come off of a loss, be prepared to admit to the team that the coaches helped cost you the loss. Because the coaches never get exposed when you win. And, and if you go into tomorrow, this morning's meeting, and you say that it's the coach's fault, that's the only way that you can get better. Because if people are gonna point fingers after a loss, then you have to be willing to say, we're open for business. We're ready to hear. All. There, you remember Wednesday mornings. Oh. Wednesday mornings were either- Start of your work week. Yeah, and, and install. Yeah. This is how Inst we're going to install, absolutely. right? Yes. So I said to John, do not glass over the mistakes that the coaches made in the loss because if you don't address that now and say we're open for business, this is not an install meeting. In an, in an install meeting on Wednesday morning is sufficient if you're coming off a win. If you're coming off a loss, then it should not be an install meeting for the first 30 minutes. It should be a come to Jesus and let's talk about what we did wrong and let's have you guys talk about what you did wrong first. Right. So I said, get the coaches together tonight, and this was yesterday, get the coaches together and talk about your failures so that you lay them out so that it allows the players to say, all right, at least they're taking some responsibility for that loss. Well, you've always been an empowered man, and, and that's good because you have to empower not only your coaching staff in this business because this is different than anything else, folks. This is all about winning. It's not about style points. It's not about these stats that I could ring off. It's not about any. At the end of the day, this organization, I've known this man for a long time, this organization is about winning football games. Hook or cook, let's do that. And, and someone may have to Google this, but I think since your tenure or close, to 2005, this team has never been less than nine and seven. I think in, in, uh, yeah, in, 2000, yeah, in 2005, that. I think we were six and 10. Yeah. And since then, I don't think we've been less right. than nine and seven. Right. So that's about consistency and about winning. That's the hardest part is to block out what's going on when you're losing because since I saw you last, you know, we got this. Yeah, that's and, right. And and the, the can you radio say that again? Shows, yeah. <laughs> catch, catch. Okay. He will. Uh, he'll throw it. You better catch it. <laughs> Somebody come and fix the floor. <laughs> we got a huge hole over there. He's gonna need shoulder, shoulder surgery to keep lifting his hand up. You gotta take a picture with it. You gotta take a picture with it first. <laughs> you might need two figures to put that up. Well, I got have, yeah. I got the last losing season of six and ten and two oh five. Two thousand seven. Two thousand seven. Seven. 
Okay. Five and eleven. Yeah, that was pretty injury. All right. That was pretty injury play, dude. That helped usher well, in Joe Flacco and Ray Rice. There you yeah, go. Okay, eleven. All right. So that I, I like so that was one from there, and then <laughs> that was that was the pick that got Joe Flacco. Right. 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 So, but you you talk about Steve that you sat down with John Harbaugh for an hour and a half. Is that something that? You just started to do is that an evolution oh, no, of being an time. owner? No, 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 no. And do you do just do you just do it after a loss? Do you do it after a win also? Oh yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, my my job my job is just to get to keep John thinking like the norm because it's hard for him. I watched his show. I was in. Uh, you know, I I, I watched his Monday press conference and I saw him and I thought he handled himself with class and he acknowledged that he made some mistakes and you don't understand the difference between making decisions that have a even a 40 60 chance of winning sometimes you have to make that decision and I I heard guys even in the Baltimore Sun say you should have taken the point I, I one of the writers in the Baltimore Sun said I'm sorry, but in a low-scoring game, you take the points on fourth and one as if he is clairvoyant and knew that it was going to be a low-scoring game. I think we thought it was going to be a high-scoring game. Absolutely, everybody. And did. I think that, that my coach made the right decision to go for it on fourth and one, but it didn't work. And I didn't like the play. <laughs> well, whether we liked the play or not, the fact of the matter is going for it that shows some, that shows, you're at home. I don't have a problem with that. I just didn't like the play. I don't know that those plays are that much different than the two that Ray scored in Miami last week, though. Yeah, but uh, it's hard but to. they scored. I know. But, no, but, but you've you got to move the line of scrimmage. Well, you know, therein lies the problem, that, that we're having problems in, in, in our run scheme that is, like John said yesterday, putting a hat on a hat. And, yeah, we got to work on that. But... We're working on it every day in practice, and when you get to that point, then you have to believe that you're going to push them back. So you can't say, based on past experience, we're getting knocked back, so let's kick the field goal. Yeah. So it's a, it's a tough business that they're in. In April 1959, Art Wall won the Masters, edging out Cary Middlecoff and Arnold Palmer by finishing birdie, 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 par birdie. One month later, Ocean City Golf Club celebrated the opening of their first 18 holes. That course has been transformed now into one of the most scenic golf layouts on the East Coast. Come experience 36 of the most beautiful and challenging holes you'll find anywhere. Ocean City Golf Club in Ocean City, Maryland. Welcome to the Comfort in Gold Coast. Conveniently located just one block from the beach and adjacent to shopping at the Gold Coast Mall and the movie theater. Newly renovated and open year round with a marvelous bayfront view. Visit us on the web at comfortgoldcoast.com and see our hot deals and great golf packages or simply call our direct reservation line to plan your stay.